Hi YouTube, so this is the fourth video in the series of me working on this uh, fleet scale made uh, 1 in 72 Fletcher, sorry, um, Duke class uh, frigate that's used in the Royal Navy currently. Um, this is a two meter long model that um, I am I'm currently working on and in the last few videos I've uh, shown what I've done so far which is to be honest doesn't really look like a lot but today um, what I'm going to show you is a significant uh, step forward in what I've been working on and it was a, a pretty big uh, project and that is to get the deck in place. Uh, the traditional way to get the deck in is to glue it down um, and that way you can make sure there's no uh, there's no gaps, there's no cracks and it will be rigid and uh, flush with the rest of the model. And then you have holes in the in the in the in the deck such as uh, well no, there's not one there. Um, such as a hole like we have uh, here and here uh, that would allow you to have access to the, the motors, um, the speed controllers, the batteries and things like that. I decided to not use that traditional method because um, I wanted the model to be very robust such that in the future if I need to make upgrades to the electronics or if I need to repair damage to parts that are inside the ship I would have easy access to the easy access to everything uh, and that's not an easy thing to do if the deck is glued down once everything is in place and glued and painted um, it's going to be pretty difficult uh, and also emotionally traumatic to actually rip all that stuff up and kind of like um, uh, kind of like start again so my alternative approach is to um, hold the deck in place using magnets and then make sure that there is no gaps around so that the, the deck can be removed the advantage to this is that I can get to any point uh, inside the hull uh, without having to go through um, the, the cut holes. Uh, it means that should I have any damage to the prop shafts or to the rudders, um, I can replace any of those components uh, just by removing the entire deck. So it's designed to be accessible if needed, but probably not the primary access point for things like just changing out the battery or even swapping out a motor. For those simple tasks, um, I can just use the access uh, access holes that are gonna be underneath the superstructure. So um, I kind of showed this earlier, but I've got a middle section of the superstructure here, uh, which is where the funnel um, is positioned. We've got this one here at the back. Currently there is no, uh, there's no access underneath this because the, the this is the hangar bay and the hangar bay will actually be open. And then I've got another access port that's at the front, which will be the direct access for the batteries. Uh, and this one has the bridge superstructure on top of it. And then what you can't see in the video is that there's another small access hole at the front, which may not be particularly useful. And that is where um, the missile silo, the vertical launch missile silo sits on top of that. So let me just take off all these pieces and actually show you um, how this works. Because I think it is a pretty novel approach for bu people building models to um, to actually uh, have the deck held in place with magnets. Um, I, I, I would imagine it's probably not that unusual for people to hold the superstructure in place with magnets, but actually holding the deck in place um, is pretty is pretty uh, pretty bold, I think. So let me uh, let me shift the model forward a little bit so you have access. You can see the back. So now you can just kind of see um, the back of the hull. There's rudders are in place, but there's no prop shafts. I'm oh, sorry, there's no. Uh, uh, blades on the prop shafts yet um, but if I put my fingers under here and I lift up I can actually lift off the deck and see the deck is starting to come away and it see, see if I if I let go it, clamp, it clamps itself back into place because of magnets so there is magnets all the way underneath this deck um, the deck is made of like a fiberglass material but I have reinforced the bottom um, with aluminum bars so that I can uh, keep everything kind of nice and rigid. So here's um, here is the uh, the what the underneath of the deck looks like. It's pretty messy, but you can see that there are aluminum bars, and you can actually see the neodymium magnets that are holding everything in place. Um, these magnets are actually mounted so that they pull the hull together laterally. So once they're inside, they, it actually kind of pulls the hull together. So the the their magnets are not only holding the deck down, but they're sucking the sides of the hull um, together so that it's flush around the deck plate. Um, and I think that's a kind of uh, a pretty cool idea. I've never seen um, anybody do that, but then um, again, I've never 
really research this a lot to find out whether this is a, a method that anybody else has used. Um, I'm going to put the deck down real quick. So you can kind of see now that there are uh, wooden struts that go across um, the hole. They're also holding the deck that, uh, in place so that it doesn't uh, sink down, but they're also pulling pulling the, the hole together. Uh, and then once the deck is off, I have access to everything. There are opposing magnets on the inside at set points. So everywhere there was a magnet um, on the back plate of the deck, there is another magnet in place on, on, on the hull itself, mounted to the sides. And they're mounted inwards. So there is two here. These are the ones closest to the back. There is one at the back that holds the, um, the aft uh, helicopter deck in place. Um, there's two more just forward of the motors, uh, two more again, uh, right where the battery is going to sit, and then two more again, um, kind of in the fore quarter of the ship, and then one final one, which goes up at the front here, and this one has uh, the, the front of the deck in place. So um, what's probably not particularly obvious from the angle we're at, if I just tilt this uh, up a little bit, you can actually see that the fore deck is actually mounted in place. So the idea here would be that you would get water that um, runs over the front of the deck. Um, that's the most likely place for water to come in. So this part of the deck here is actually um, sealed in place. And the point where the stuck down deck meets the um, magnetized deck is uh, right underneath the vertical launch missile silo. So the vertical launch missile silo will actually stick mostly over that, uh, where that gap would be. There's also um, a pair of magnets at the front of the ship that actually pull the deck towards the front of the ship, um, holding it in place in and out so that it's always got a nice snug um, fit down at the front. So that's the main progress that I've made. I'll probably make another video um, not too far in the future that shows them um, all the mechanics that I'm putting into the ship right now. I do have the motors in place. I kind of got the rudder mechanism sorted out, but it's not quite um, permanently fixed yet. Once those are in, um, I've got my batteries ready to go. I've got my speed controllers that just need to be mounted. Uh, and I'll be ready to go. So uh, that's it. I hope you find this uh, interesting. And if you've been following along with um, the build for this ship, you'll know that this is a pretty, pretty significant step forward. And I'm almost ready to actually do some trial runs and get this in the water. Thanks for watching. Bye.